This is not fucking cooperating right now. What's up, guys? All right, so I'm just gonna leave these blank until I fill them in later along. Uh, just FYI, this is not mine. This is just the, uh, this is copying an infographic that I saw that it probably explains grain structure the best I've ever seen it laid out. So I'm just kind of copying through that. I just couldn't find it for some reason today. Plus I wouldn't get to use a whiteboard. Starting out with casting. This right here looks like a freckle-faced, red-headed stepchild for a reason. So what casting is, is basically you take metal, and just for argument's sake, let's just say this is all 4140 steel or whatever. It's just a like, a like metal. This isn't like one of them's aluminum, one of them's steel. Let's just say 4140, just for argument's sake. So you melt down blocks of steel until they're molten form, and then you'd pour them into a casting mold. And there's a couple of different variations of casting, but that's pretty much the gist of it. You're melting the metal, and you're pouring it into a mold. It cools down, and you have a piece of steel that is in the shape of the mold. So that's what casting is, generally. So when it comes to grain structure, the problem with casting is that you have no real grain structure. And an even bigger problem is that is that the, the metal has a tendency to be somewhat porous, which means there, there can be air bubbles, like really, really small air bubbles trapped in here. The metal is really not the strongest it can be. Now I've seen cast bolts break. I've seen cast bolt carriers break. I've seen cast trunnions break. And all of them always look the same. If you go to Google Images and look up images of uh, cast trunnions or cast bolt carriers or whatever breaking, you always see on the inside, it's a little spongy. Like the, the, the metal has these little dots, the little holes in it. And you can always tell that that means it's cast. It looks like a bastard child between Colossus from Deadpool and fucking SpongeBob. So the question is, why do people still fucking use it? If we know it sucks and we know that billet and forge is better, and we're going to get into a little bit of why that is later, why do people still use it? And the answer is simply cost. It is far, far cheaper. Well, it's not even that much cheaper, but it is, it is significantly cheaper. Uh, to just melt the metal down and pour it into molds. And so a lot of the lower end companies, you can almost guarantee that any American made AK that is stamped has a cast front trunnion. And that is just because it's cost. If you see a budget AK that was new, it's new production, it's not surplus, new production AK under probably seven to $800, you can be pretty damn sure that it's got a cast trunnion. And this is probably the one thing I'd love to hammer into the heads of all, all these newer AK guys out there that you really have to be careful of is uh, especially if you're coming over from the AR world, AR stuff is pretty damn cheap to make. It's all aluminum, okay? It's, it's stuff that they have extrusions for, and it's stuff that's really easy to do on a, uh, on, uh, a mill. Aluminum's really, really easy to machine and work with. It's not that expensive. You can get a fairly decent built AR fairly cheaply. On an AK, you're working with things that are significantly harder to machine and on materials that are very much harder to work with than aluminum. So you really have to wonder if something costs Let's say the, the base model gun that is well built costs $900 and you've got an opportunity to buy something that's new production for $700. It's not a matter of did they cut corners, it's which corners did they cut and can I live with that. So it, just keep an eye out. Now moving on to billet machined. Oh, this is actually cool. Give me, hold on one second. So for example, this is, has a little bit of surface rust on it. This is a big ass block of 4140 steel, and this is actually going to be an AK-50 V3 receiver, uh, but this is what we are talking about when we say billet. So it's literally a rectangular chunk of steel that is going to be machined. It's going to be put into a CNC machine, a five axis in this case, and we're going to take mill bits to it and just chop the shit out of it until it looks like our part. As you can see here, now we have some grain structure. There's actually a flow, and it flows with the original billet. So if it was a square block that had the... Uh, grains flowing from left to right or, or you know however however you want to work that out. This actually doesn't change the grain structure of the metal so it's still flowing its original way uh, it just cuts out portions of it and you have your your shape of your part. This isn't ideal compared to forged but it is light years and I cannot stress that enough light years ahead of casting because here you actually do have some grain structure and nine times out of ten you do have a much more solid composition of the metal itself. Now, one of the advantages of billet that it has over casting or forging is that it's actually fairly cheap to do in low numbers, especially if you have easy access to a machine shop. This is mostly due to the low cost of initial investment. So with casting, you have to get, obviously, the molds. Forging, you have to get the hammer forging dies. Billet, as long as you can reprogram a CNC machine, you can run it all day long. 
And so for prototyping, for example, like on the AK-50, if we know that we're going to be making a lot of revisions, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to go out and invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in molds or hammer forging dies or things like that before we've settled on an initial design. And so that's one of the uh, big reasons that people use billet if they're not going to be using large quantities of this stuff. Fair word to the wise on billet though, uh, not all CNC shops are created equally. So uh, one person's billet trunnion may not be equal to another person's billet trunnion. Uh, it all depends on who's running the machine, what kind of machines they're running, what kind of tolerances are they running, just something to keep in mind. It's like, not like that all, all billet front trunnions are exactly the same quality. That's not what I'm saying at all. Now we've gotten to the part that's going to make every AK diehard cream themselves, forged. Forged is considered pretty much top tier when it comes to AK parts, especially like trunnions, bolts, things like that. So what you actually have is hammer forging dies. You can look these up on YouTube. They're actually pretty freaking cool. That uh, hammer the metal into the shape of the part before it's finished machined. So like really detailed parts of it, like for example, that have to be like dead on, like the uh, bolt face itself or like the camming lug on the uh, inside of the bolt carrier. Those will be finished machined later, but the actual raw shape of it, more or less, like let's say it's, it's an 80% part. It pops out an 80% part that is a really, really nice, dense metal with the grain structure completely aligned. And that's what you see here, where billet just kind of cuts away from the middle and it cuts away from the grain structure itself. This actually aligns the metal with the shape of the part and it comes out very, very dense and very, very strong. This is one of the main reasons you'll see people paying out the ass to get hammer forged barrels is because uh, over long periods of time, especially on a uh, machine gun, they tend to hold up a little bit better. It's worth pointing out that virtually every surplus AK on the market, forged parts. Now one of the reasons forged parts haven't really caught on as far as American made AKs yet is because it's pretty damn expensive. When you have the Soviet war machine backing you and you're, you're pouring out tens of thousands of AKs every month, fairly easy to afford hammer forging dies. But uh, when you're a smaller company or you're really trying to cut costs and come in on the lower side of the market, pretty expensive to uh, pay to have a bunch of hammer forging dies made. And so that's where you have some of the problems with people that are trying to really cut their costs down and come in on the, on the lower end of the market to the casual gun buyer. This is why they're not putting out forged parts. So for all the guys like, I don't know why they're still using cast. It's like, well, it's because you keep buying $600 shit. That's why they're using it. Now, be careful for a couple of marketing buzzwords that are floating around there. A lot of people are saying that their, uh, their trunnions are made out of forged billet. That is not the same as forged. Basically, what that means is that the billets that they started out with, the blocks, were forged billets, which is great, but it still doesn't get you the uh, same grain structure as an actual forged part that was forged. The dies were made for that specific shape. So just uh, something to keep an eye out for. So for the too long, didn't read version, this gets a big fucking fail. This gets a... Decent size check, and this passes with flying colors. This is kind of the, uh, this is the accepted standard for good AK parts. This, we'll see more of this, I imagine, especially with a lot of smaller shops that aren't turning out huge quantities of AK stuff. Uh, we'll see more billet in the future, and we'll see how it holds up. I mean, there's, there's no reason it shouldn't. Honestly, these two should be decent enough. Just be careful who's making your parts, because what this comes down to is that, again, not all metals and not all parts are created equally. It has a lot to do with who's running the machines. It has a lot to do with what they're using. If they're cranking out a shit ton of parts and overrunning their machines and their tolerances are super loose, you're going to come out with a couple of shitty parts. So just be very conscious of who's doing it and uh, see if you trust them. And more importantly, see if Paul Popov trusts them. And just to let you guys know, I do practice what I preach. My company will never use cast trunnions or anything like that. I just, I don't believe in it. I don't believe... I don't believe it cuts enough cost to warrant using them compared to the amount of quality that you use. If you like ripping people off and uh, you like taking advantage of the average uh, just relaxed shooter that maybe pumps out 100 rounds in a weekend once every six months and you think that's okay, fine, by all means do that. But uh, I understand that most people won't shoot thousands of rounds out of their rifle every month, but I want them to be able to have a rifle that can. So I know you guys are going to be out there who are going to come to the comment section like, oh, my blankety blank 47 uh, shot five and a half thousand rounds through it with no problems, no issues. Uh, either A, you're lying and God's watching. And uh, B, if you go on the forums and say that, you're going to have a bad time. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. If you like this video, send me a smoke signal. And uh, if you're using one of them 21st century gadgets, be sure to subscribe 
Uh, we've got more AK-50 content coming soon. We've got a lot of new updates on that. And if you want more content like this with the whiteboard of knowledge and stuff like this, I am not the smartest guy in the world. I don't know everything about AKs, but I do know some stuff that I think might be helpful to you guys. So if you, if you like videos like this, please let me know. We will make more of it. My camera guys love it when we have content. It's a great day. Anyhow, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next video. And I already know my handwriting sucks, so I better not get any comments about how I write like an autistic chimpanzee. Another word to the wise. Not all machine... A little, 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 blah, 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 blah. Let me try that again. This is neither here nor there. No, well, this is pretty relevant, so never mind. And just to let you know, I practice what my pre... What the fuck? So thank you guys so much for sitting through this. Ow. Be sure to leave a comment in the uh, comment box below. And what comment box? What the fuck? What am I talking about? <laughs>